Hello, and welcome to this episode of Main Street Monday, a monthly virtual meeting presented by the Kansas Main Street Program. This informal meeting is designed to offer updates from the state and national Main Street programs, but most important, it gives our designated Kansas Main Street communities an opportunity to share a little bit about what they've been doing in their communities. These are scheduled at 10 a.m. on the second Monday of each month. If you have not signed up, you can find a link in the description in this video. We hope you'll join us for future episodes. And now, let's get started with this month's episode. So this is a document that we produced uh, this year. That was the first time that uh, the chamber had produced a annual report of any kind as Scott and Shelley know um, my, my background, we come from a data side. So we're excited about Maestro uh, as much as one can be excited about inputting data, but it's really uh, the data that you get out. And so we, even in the interim in the last couple of years, since we've taken over, we've been using uh, data um, to really measure things that had not been measured before and really be able to produce information uh, that allows us to to show folks what we've been doing so you can just go forward a couple you can keep going um so this is just a quick summary of some of the the highlights of the atchison chamber you can move on from that scott Visit is a, a key component. And, and one of the things that was interesting for us is that we felt as though from an organizational, organizational standpoint, we were the only organization in the community that had the capacity, the professional capacity, the will, the desire, the energy to be able to, to pull off the, the acquisition of, of a main street. We, I personally find, and I think our board finds, uh, our, both our Main Street board and the Chamber board, that there is a lot of value uh, associated with having a single strategy for a community and not being broken into silos. We don't have the, the, the same issue of competing with a Chamber, competing with a, a visitor experience, and you start to see some of the power that we have available to us uh, through our digital channels. We focused a lot of energy over the last two years um, building up our social channels to being able to, to really have a powerful weapon as it relates to uh, communicating and reaching our target demographics. Um, these are just some highlighted numbers as, as maybe not everyone knows, but we are the haunted capital of uh, Kansas. So we've taken full advantage of that. We actually manage the Sally House. It's owned by an individual, but we do handle all of the back end. And we've started tracking numbers prior to us taking control. Um, we, uh, the, the largest amount of money that we'd ever booked at Sally House was $38,000. We pushed it online. So we use technology as a tool. We pushed all of the bookings online so that, you know, when that group of people are out cocktailing on Friday evening and they make a irrational decision to go to a haunted house and spend lots of money, they push a button and lo and behold, they bought. Prior to that, it was a, you had to call during office hours. We took the, the credit card information manually. We processed it and we would send them information. So last year we did almost $80,000 worth of selling house visits. So obviously we more than doubled our productivity, our efficiency by uh, pushing that uh, entire process online. We also are a visitor center for the community. So we are probably the, the real destination for a lot of the traffic that, that's flowing into town. It's one of the reasons why we're evaluating going into downtown. We just, we sit in a, a historic depot that sits just outside of the downtown district. 
and we are uh, actually at least negotiations to move downtown that will include a, a new entity. You can go ahead and push forward. So uh, we're obviously a new uh, Main Street. We branded our Main Street locally, Atchison Main Street. We had a program that had already been started for uh, for new makers and artists called locally Atchison that we were housing them in our brick and mortar uh, retail store. So we just took that phrase and built on it and have uh, built our brand around locally Atchison Main Street. As a new entity, we did all of the things that I think were expected of us, including creating a board, mission statement, vision statement, logo, all that kind of good stuff. We had the, uh, the ability to uh, do a kind of a, hey, we're here by, uh, we had an old historic mall that was put in place instead of a street. The city, after lots of collaboration with us and others, made the decision to um, take the mall out and reproduce a street the way it should be. From an aesthetic standpoint, from a um, physical connection, it was really a a barrier to connecting all of our downtown gesture. So we were able to, that, that project got done to the tune of about 1.4 million. And we were able to um, host a grand opening, which was attended by hundreds of people, concert, music, beer, all that kind of good stuff. So it was a great way for us to introduce ourselves to the community. Beyond that, we've held stakeholder meetings, you know, as you would expect as well, one-on-one -on -one with elected officials, uh, business owners, property owners, the county itself. We have a, a really important piece of our community is Benedictine College, which has, I think it's a, a new record again this year, uh, over 2,000 students. So they're a key component to who we are and what we do. And it's a an area that we have been less than intentional about making them feel welcome, making them feel part of our community. So we have worked really, really hard to, from the president of the college all the way down to student activities, really uh, reaching out, embracing them. And we, we will have more coming up for their re-entry in August as they come back to school. We'll have a, a, a significantly more robust hey, welcome to our community and an educational process to have them shopping in our districts. We uh, have done a lot of work on our websites over the past two years, um, both at the chamber as well as visit. We have, uh, I had some experience in a, in a prior life about ecosystem building. I, I, I've done a lot of consulting on uh, entre uh, uh, entrepreneurialism as well as economic development. So it was a natural foray for us to get into that. Again, we use uh, a, a partnership with Benedictine College to really sort of drive some of that uh, entrepreneurial service, that ecosystem building. We met with the, the Benedictine actually has a uh, center for entrepreneurial services. So we partnered with their director and they are offering their first fast track class. They they actually uh, were awarded fast track affiliation through the Kaufman Foundation. So we had our our first class is going on right now. Really good uh, turnout. We had twelve people uh, sign up for it. it is, if you don't know about it, it's a extraordinarily rigorous ten week, just really basic level of. Uh, from conception all the way through running a business. And it's just a great foundation for any entrepreneur, especially young entrepreneurs. We have a couple of those in our community that have really benefited from just getting a baseline, uh, formal, more academic education, but with some real life spin to it. And again, Kaufman and Fast Track is a nationally known uh, entrepreneurial education uh, program that is really second to none. We did a pretty robust Shop Small Saturday uh, 
marketing, we had, um, we did three weeks of print. We did three weeks of radio. We did six weeks of uh, digital strategy. We were, we were going door to door to our retailers downtown. Uh, and we emailed everyone downtown, um, an entire portfolio. We, we provided a toolkit that of things to do things to, you know, to take our, take it, take the national campaign, take our campaign and, and put it into uh, their marketing strategy to be able to really uh, have a, a more impactful. So partnering with uh, larger entities, really piggybacking off of obviously all of the work that uh, American Express does with their Shop Small Saturday program and, and building off of that. So as a design element, um, for downtown uh, this particular year, because we had taken out the mall, we found ourselves, the community found themselves in a position where we didn't have as much of the um, typical Christmas decorations, uh, if you will. So we created a, what we called a tinsel trail. We put 30 Christmas trees placed throughout our main drag in our district, Commercial Street, and had businesses adopt those. And then we had a, a big contest for people to go through and uh, pick the winners. You know, the businesses, what we have found, our experience has been that, you know, as opposed to asking them for what they want to do, if you give them very specific guidelines, we would want you to adopt this tree and decorate it it was done and it was extraordinarily successful. It created a temporary visual um, down our commercial street that would, we used it as a design tool to really drive people up and down the corridor, uh, something that you would normally see uh, public art do, but we used Christmas trees uh, as a, a uh, technique from a design perspective to do exactly what a, a public art project would do. We also pulled off uh, probably the largest, lightest, lighted Christmas parade in Atchison's recent history. We had 70, I think it was actually ended up being 78 floats straight down Commercial Street. Uh, and it was everything, everything about the parade was completely lit. It was at, at night, everything was lit. Um, using my Irish, uh, way of counting uh, parades in the past. You know, we had a quarter of a million people in Atchison, but I'm told it was probably more like 2,500. I asked people who were, uh, you know, questioning my number if they had actually counted as I had, uh, and they had not. So I'm sticking with my quarter of a million people were in Atchison for the Light at Christmas Parade, and we hope to have a half a million next year so. Um, we were, uh, we, we took a preempt, preemptive uh, to Maestro, not even knowing that Maestro would be a tool that we would use. So we actually started our survey of the downtown businesses and had a, a database built prior to um, Maestro coming to us as a gift. So um, it was pretty handy for us to be able to put it into a working document or a working database or a working CRM system that would allow us to track uh, information more readily. But uh, we knew that we were going to have to have that data and we needed to be more aware of what we had downtown. So we have started the process in advance. One of the other things that were kind of uh, uh, better to be lucky than good was the city had been awarded a USDA placemaking grant last year and a firm out of Iowa had been awarded and we had asked them along with the city if they would as, well, as one of their deliverables uh, give us a set of uh, downtown design guidelines. Ours had not been updated for a long, long time and I'm being generous uh, and they were really out of date. So we uh, now have a draft document of some design guidelines that really reflect the history of, of Atchison and reflect that sense of place that we're trying to build in our district. 
And uh, we hope to have those uh, implemented and executed and in place uh, sometime mid this year. We're also working with the city to do a, a downtown uh, design for commercial street art, again, our main drag. Um, and they, they, we work with them, we lobbied and advocated with them and they've set aside $100,000 for downtown design um, for commercial street. So again, we had already started uh, doing some of the numbers for downtown prior to uh, Maestro and actually prior to us being awarded Main Street, but these are some of the reflections. Obviously commercial street, the renovation investment was 1.4. We have another, our Main Street, our physical Main Street, which is at one of our, our Southern barrier or boundary to our Main Street district, will is going through a streetscape project this year, which I believe is to the tune of about 1.2 million. So again, another investment. We helped the city craft a downtown facade rebate uh, program Originally, they had a loan program that wasn't being used uh, real well. I had had some experience in, in uh, prior in other communities where we created a grant program and it was a matching. And what we found in other uh, entities is that the match far exceeded what you were giving them. So we were able to convince the, the, the city to go to a rebate uh, and just straight grant program, and you'll you see the numbers. I mean, sixty thousand dollars worth of uh, public investment got us three hundred and forty thousand dollars worth of private investment. So again, a win-win. Uh, my experience has always been that uh, private investment always follows public investment, and I I think that's the case in all of our downtowns. We took the, uh, the opportunity to share some of the data that was coming out of our transformation strategy from Main Street America and Kansas Main Street uh, when they came to us. So these are just some interesting tidbits that we were able to provide. We've actually provided the full document to uh, all of our retailers downtown so that they understood some of the dynamics of what was happening in the community and, and why it was happening. So. This is a list of uh, our upcoming uh, events. I will say that this is one of the areas as a new Main Street uh, we've, we've had some issues with. I'd say both communication and cooperation is, is probably in a lot of your cases. We have folks that have taken and hosted events uh, for some period of time. And some of those folks don't necessarily want to play nice with Main Street. So we are dealing with that. Uh, First Fridays being a is a most recent example of a blow up where it was their event that they felt we were stealing from them. Um, needless to say, we were suggesting that they could continue to do the event. We put it on steroids. We just went into control branding, communication, and you know, because it's our reputation, um, and they they've decided to go on their own. So, St. Patrick's Day, similar experience uh, dealing with uh, a few older women with Oktoberfest that uh, feel the exact same way about their event. Now, uh, needless to say, some of these events have been diminishing over time. Um, we'll continue to, to to try and partner with folks and try and convince them of the value of partnering with us, but we're doing it in a non -adversarial, as, as non-adversarial as we possibly can. We're not trying to fight with anybody. We have made the decision uh, to, uh, to really blow up, especially after listening uh, last week to Salina talk about their festival and then going online and doing some research um, we have a Muddy River Music Festival that we are going to be uh, make our signature fall event. We're actually going to do it on Benedictine's family weekend in the launch to our haunted season so that we have some critical mass already in town. 
one of the things that we're trying to convince people to uh, to in the community is that it's okay to be really busy. That you know, multiple things happening is not a bad thing. That it's actually a good thing, so that we'll we'll drive traffic. The other uh, major thing that we are doing, uh, as I said, we're in negotiations to move downtown. Well, we're moving downtown with a uh, we are one of our largest employers, one of the most uh, recognized nationally is a distillery by the name of MGP. And they make enormous amounts of uh, clear liquors in Atchison, but they have also recently purchased Luxpro. And they are a maker of uh, bourbons. And they also have a tequila maker and gin, et cetera. So we are, um, we've secured a six figure um, partnership with MGP to help us open a tasting room. We're doing everything we physically can to have that in downtown Atchison. Was able to show uh, Scott and Shelly the actual location. We've bogged down a little bit in lease negotiations, but we are, we're working through those, we hope, and um, are going to open our tasting room, our retail store and move our offices to downtown to really be a driver, uh, as, as, as I said earlier, you know, probably the biggest destination for visitors coming into town is our location. So being able to have that downtown will be phenomenal. So I think that is everything that I can think of. I'm not sure if that was my A game as the guinea pig, it is Monday morning. Uh, but I'm happy to answer questions or take suggestions or comments or what are you thinking? I thought you did a great job for kicking it off, for sure. You've got a thing or two going on on Atchison, I think. <laughs> yeah, we're really, we're real pleased with where we are at a strategic level. I think now it's really just executing and as all of you know, um, it, it's a it's a like economic development. I've said it in the past, and I will say this again. Anybody that's involved, everybody's heard the eighty twenty rule about you know that eighty percent of the people sitting back watching 20 people doing the work. Well, in economic development and community development, it's 1% doing the work and 99% watching. So it is a long slog. We are locked in on the, you know, the long-term and the strategic, but, um, you know, your downtown retailers, your downtown businesses sometimes aren't as patient or, or thinking as strategically as we are. Um, so it's, uh, that's probably a challenge as well. Just maintaining our discipline, maintaining our patience while, you know, you have people kind of like, what are you doing? What are you doing? Do it faster. And I think I answered Jamie's, it was a Jamie's question. We do have a, a little bit larger staff than most would have simply because we are doing, we are uh, three legs to a stool uh, with chamber, with tourism and uh, with Main Street. So we're in a pretty for fortunate position uh, from, a, from a funding standpoint. All right, Are, Shelley, can you see any other questions in the chat? For some reason, I'm not. Yeah, well, I know Sarah's got her hand up. Yeah. Sarah Werner. Hey, yeah, uh, thanks, Jim. I have a question for you. Um, we also have a lighted Christmas parade here in Winfield. What is your trick for getting so many entries? We uh, felt like we were doing good when we took it over the first year and um, increased to about 25. So I'd love to know your, your trick for getting so many entries. Um, one, we're not above groveling. So that, that's very effective. Uh, two, I have a, one of my staffers is literally the most tenacious human 
and will not take no for an answer. So that's also helpful. Um, I think last year, so it, it also some of it's uh, because of COVID, there was this explosion of people wanting to be involved. Also because of our haunted affiliation, we had, um, what's the goofy movie? Uh, Beetlejuice? Anyway, <laughs> Ghostbusters. We had a group of people that had tons of decorated uh, vehicles and things by way of, by virtue of, of Ghostbusters. Uh, so we do a lot of outreach over the, over the course of the, of the year and other things. Uh, but yeah, we, we, we just worked really, really hard at it and we were playing full. We actually put out a, um, a digital, uh, you know, entry into it, but, um, yeah, it was, it was great. As I said, I, I think we will, because of the success of it. And the other thing that was amazing was that it was a straight, you, in the past, our, our uh, parades have taken the securitist routes through, you know, the downtown area. We forced everybody straight down Commercial Street, which you can now do because the mall's gone. And it was amazing. It was, it was huge. And it was, uh, as I said, quarter of a million people. There is a question in the chat from Kylie and Seneca. Are there general design standards that can be found somewhere and then tweaked to be town specific? Yes, <laughs> we have design guidelines that the state put together about 20 years ago. And so those are still being used, but they will be updated in the next 12 to 18 months. But yes, you can take those guidelines, work with your design committee and update those and tweak them to work for your community. And where can those be found, Mr. Sewell? We can uh, <laughs> send a link to those. That Anybody would be that swell. Them? Hey, Kelly, I would also say that um, design guidelines for a historic downtown are pretty easy to find all across the country as well. But we, we, I don't know what the exact term that Emporia talked about at that last meeting about R&D. I don't know if it was rip off and duplicate or something Perfect. like that. Perfect. Yes. But I have learned... Uh, through lots of experience that we are no longer plagiarizing. We're simply implementing best practices. Implementing best practices. There you go. Thank you, Jim. I appreciate uh, you doing this this morning. Great job. Uh, I can say that um, if you haven't been to Atchison recently, the, the transformation that's happened by getting rid of that pedestrian mall downtown is significant. If you've been to Atchison over the years and you knew what that downtown pedestrian mall was like to get there now and see it is, is really impressive. And like we talked about when we were there as part of their market analysis visit in late last year, uh, it's kind of like they have this new canvas to work with, which is pretty unique. Not many main streets or downtowns get the chance to do that. So uh, thank you again, Jim, for your help, and it's uh, always a pleasure to work with you.